In this video, we're going to talk about how to measure an inductive or reluctance type sensor. So in this hub assembly, we've got a reluctance or induction type sensor. It uses just two wires with a magnet and a coil, and it looks at a reluctor ring that spins by in order to generate a voltage. And so we're working with AC volts, and there's a couple different ways that we could test the sensor to decide whether or not it's in good shape. The first one is just to look at resistance. Because it has a coil winding inside, we expect a certain amount of resistance to be present. So if I take my meter and get it set up like this, I've just got each connection on a wire for that sensor. I'm gonna go to resistance on my meter and look and see what I get there. And so we're reading about 1.2 kilo ohms or 1200 ohms for that sensor. I'd wanna compare that to service information and see if that's good or within specification. That's really just a quick test to decide is the coil winding within that sensor in okay shape or at least that it has continuity. The second test that I can do is actually look for voltage and see can this sensor generate a voltage. The first way that I can do that is with my DVOM, same setup as what I did for resistance. I'm gonna go to AC volts on my DVOM and then we've gotta get this set up so that we can spin the wheel bearing assembly. So with my meter set up in AC volts, I can spin the bearing and I should see voltage created. The amount of voltage that I see is going to gain in amplitude. It's going to rise with an increase in speed. And so I've got to find just a consistent point and decide, can it make a consistent voltage? A third way that we could measure this wheel speed sensor is with an oscilloscope. So I've got the picoscope set up here. It is just in parallel. I've still got my meter connected so we could look at both screens. And so here as I rotate, I get about 0 0.4, 0 0.5 volts on my meter. And on the scope, you can see what's really happening. So there's an AC sine wave. If I slow down, we can really see it where I've got peaks on the positive and the negative side. And so this helps me understand what the reluctor looks like within this sensor. This one has got just consistent teeth all the way around. And it also helps me understand what the meter does compared to an oscilloscope. The oscilloscope has the ability to show me all of the events because the sample rate of that scope is so high. And so I get all of this travel. These are individual plots of voltage as we go through our motion. On my meter, those things are just averaged. And so what I'm left with is just a number that is an average of the change that's happening. And so that's a good limitation to understand that this is kind of a quick test that's going to show me the basics of what's happening. But if I really wanted to understand exactly what this waveform looks like and what the computer is really processing, I'm going to have to go to a tool like an oscilloscope. 